What is it, Howard? Would you have a look in Hilda's ear for me, please? <coughs> of course. Why? Is there some sort of flying insect in there? I'm sure there is. We were just walking along the road. Howard can't see it, but I'm sure there's something there. Let's have a look, then. Hold still. like a chap who's done that before. <laughs> On occasion, Howard, yes. <laughs> it's Martin. It's Martin. <coughs> They're going in. Do you know what I think? I think something's happened. <laughs> Martin, what happened? What's the matter? My underpants are wet through. <laughs> the hero he is, madam. He saved a little girl from drowning. Oh, my money's wet as well. Oh, you poor love. Come on, you must have a bath and go to bed. Hero? The genuine article. I'm oh, sorry I dripped all over your back seat. Oh, don't worry about that, sir. If that was the worst the public did to us, I'd be a happy man. I'll let myself out. Thanks. <laughs> you feel legitimate? on all of it uh, oh. <coughs> oh Howard did I tell you about the beading I put on my wardrobe Martin you've just saved a child from drowning you can talk about the beading some other time yes come on Martin give us all the details I'm bursting in your own time old man well it all happened so suddenly I went to get a paper oh where is it it's all right it's drying out with your money oh I walked back across the park and I suddenly saw this little girl in a yellow overcoat fall off the bridge into the lake. I don't think anybody else saw her but me. Well, I didn't even think of taking my shoes off. I just dived in, swam over to her and fished her out. But you can't swim. I know, but evidently I can. <laughs> no words, old man. <laughs> You're going to get kissed by me. Um. <laughs> I'm not going to kiss you, Martin. <laughs> well done, well done. I am proud of you, Martin. Oh, oh excuse me. Why are you staring at me, Hilda? I'm trying to take you in completely. How does that work out, then? There's a lot more to you, you see. Mr. Light under his bushel, that's what you are. The thing like this, and you tell it like a Reuters news flash. Come on, flesh it out a bit. Yes. What did the little girl's mother say? She said, if you ever do that again, I'll spank your bottom. <laughs> to the time, to the time. Oh. Relief, you see. How old was she? Mid-thirties, I suppose. <laughs> the child? Oh, I didn't ask, but about nine years, seven months, I should think. Did anybody else go in the water? No. There were some ducks. <laughs> Who called the police? Well, I didn't, because I was still in the water, you see. That was the local paper. They wanted to do an article about you. Oh, oh marvellous. Maybe a photograph. Oh, I don't want to be photographed in my pyjamas. Oh, no, not tonight. Tomorrow. I say, fancy Nina, a celebrity. <laughs> yes, I tell you what, Martin, I shall be dining out on you for months. Where? Uh, well, various restaurants. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what I do think. What's that, love? It's ever funny having everybody in my bedroom. <laughs> Another great between us. <laughs> Howard? Yes, old man? Did I tell you about the beading I put on my wardrobe? <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, I think Martin needs some rest now. Uh, you, you don't think some water's got into his brain, do you? <laughs> oh, no, Hilda, it's only a little shock. After all, it's not every day you learn you can swim by jumping into a lake. <laughs> you get some rest, Martin. Yes. You get some rest, Martin. Anything you need? Uh, oh, yes, I could do with a box of Tin Tacks. <laughs> right, I'll get on to that. <laughs> what a man. Oh, thanks, love. Good night, love. Good night, Anne. Anne? Yes? Can Paul swim? <laughs> you get some sleep. OK, Mr and Mrs Bryce, anywhere you feel comfortable. <laughs> now, come on, relax. I'm not going to pull your teeth out. <laughs> uh, why not just sitting on the sofa? There we are. Ready? 
All right, Annie, it's not page three. <laughs> Tops as well as bottoms, Anne. Yes, you are feeling better, aren't you, Martin? I'm just thinking of you on the newsagent's counter, that's all. Well, I don't think there's... Let's any... leave the photograph for a bit. Um, Mr Bryce. That's Y-C-E, incidentally. Uh, yes, you told me. Uh, Mr Bryce, what did you think as you saw that little girl falling in the water? What, 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 what did I think? Uh, well, uh, I, I, I think I didn't think. I, I, I don't mean that I, I thought I wouldn't think, but I, I think I thought nothing. Well, what Martin means is thinking the thought isn't thinking that you're thinking, is it? He doesn't think he thought because... because... Um... 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 <laughs> Let's try another question. <laughs> now, just relax. Are you a strong swimmer? No. In fact, I couldn't. But now he can. I see. Yeah, I, I haven't written anything down yet. These are just sort of questions to get things going. We understand. Sorry, but nervous. <laughs> if anyone should be nervous in this room, it's me. I've never interviewed a hero before. Hero? Yes, it has to be said. This is one of those stories that a local paper doesn't have any opinions about. It's black and white. What you did was an act of the utmost courage. Oh, well, I don't... Was it? Yes. <laughs> it has to be said, you saved a child's life. Yes, I suppose I did. Yes, well, that's better. Let's, uh, let's have a go at that photograph, then. Righty-ho. Uh, not too far across, Anne. After all, it has to be said, I did save a child's life. Could you just, just ease off a bit? So. After all, it has to be said, I did save a child's life. But that's not what I'm getting at. What is the council doing? You've got a lake there, which is a damn dangerous place. Not so much as a lifeboat around. Well, obviously, they're relying on the likes of me to be on the spot. Well, perhaps you should volunteer as a lifeguard. Can't be done, Paul. I've got a job to pin down. Well, you were there, and you told us all about it, and we're very proud of you. Ah. So, now we're all up to date. Yes, I suppose so. doing that for, Martin? Uh, I've still got a bit of water in there, Howard. And from the lake, you know. From going in, you mean? You've got it, old man. You know, I wonder what volume of water the human ear can stand. Well, I suppose the human ear can stand different volumes of different things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you and Hilda finished your basketwork donkey yet, Howard? <laughs> Neddy? Yes, finished him last night. Oh. Do you know, Martin, that must have been just about the time that you were saving that little girl's life. Good heaven. Not that I'm comparing the two things as accomplishments. <laughs> I just happen to be there, Howard. That's all there is to be said. One thing puzzles me, though. <laughs> Why no fear? Well, you've already said you didn't have time. Ah, yes, but I'm giving the matter a little more thought. Have you? It's all to do with thresholds, isn't it? Thresholds of pain, thresholds of fear, daring, courage. I must just have a much bigger threshold than I ever imagined. <laughs> Anyway, it's always the quiet ones, isn't it? <laughs> That's not for me to say how. Look, anybody would have done the same thing. I expect. Oh, here's Hilda. Oh, you know, I never see my Hilda come through a door without feeling a bit peculiar. <laughs> what a nice thing to say. Hello, Hilda. Hello, Hilda. How are you? Hello, everybody. Hello, Howard. Hello, Hilda. <laughs> <laughs> well, what have you been up to then? W.I. committee meeting. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> You know, what are you talking about, Hilda? Martin! Me? How do I come into things? Tomorrow night, if you would. I've been delegated to ask you to be our guest speaker. On oh, what subject, for heaven's sake? Valves. <laughs> oh! Your heroism. We all want to hear about it. Oh, I don't know. It's not an easy thing to talk about. <laughs> it was terrible, Anne. Martin just went on and on and on. He didn't stop talking for two and a half hours. <laughs> oh, I am sorry, Hilda. I did ask him to tell the potted version. That was the potted version. <laughs> he said so. Well, doesn't the WI have a way of curtailing their speakers, like a trap door in the platform? <laughs> well, what we usually do is to get Mrs Barnard to start making tea fairly audibly. And? Martin asked for his on the platform and just kept going. <laughs> I wonder why he didn't get back to half past one. <coughs> I'm afraid we've had three resignations so far, and of course, Mrs. Harcastle's had to have three stitches. Why? She got herself into one of her states and bit right through her lip. <laughs> oh, poor Emma. 
Well, Hilda, I only hope your casualties were not in vain. Perhaps Martin has finally talked himself out. Yes. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> That's him now. Oh, good. Don't be a saint, Hilda. Take a run through it through the back door. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> There you are. He may have been Canadian, but he knew a good story when he saw one. Oh, you've got the local paper. Rag, yes. They didn't use the photograph, then? No, they didn't, did they? Never mind. Never mind. Not only did they not use the photograph, but I have been squeezed in between this trivia about David Owen's visit and an advertisement for ex-Naval Officer's socks. <laughs> not a word about Shh. They didn't even mention my father. Shh. <laughs> well, I think that's a very nice article. Article? It's little more than a pricey. Well, what do you want? The whole of the front? Page. No, but it has to be said that I did save a child's life. Yes. Well, you put that in the scales against new radiators for the reference library. Look, you didn't do what you did for publicity, did you? I, I am not talking about publicity. I'm talking about informing the public properly. To be truthful, I'm a little surprised the national press didn't get hold of the story. <coughs> well, perhaps Richard Attenborough will make a film of it. <laughs> he did Gandhi, didn't he? Yes. Good film, eh? Yes. Oh, I'm not being serious. I'm not trying to steal Gandhi's thunder. Oh, thank goodness for that. No, I mean, you know, just as a matter of interest. Um, so they did make a film. I wonder if they get to play me. Paul Newman, I should think. A bit old, isn't he? <laughs> Martin, do you mind? I'm trying to do a little work. No, of course I'll have you. Go ahead, go ahead. Shame Leslie Howard died. <laughs> Gin and tonic, George, please. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Is Martin there? No. I'll be right now. Thanks, George. Have one yourself. Oh, cheers. It's a good table, this. Isn't it awful? Fancy having to hide. It's either hide or be hero to death. Mm. It's been going on for a week. I don't know why we came in at all. I'm not enjoying this drink. Anne doesn't look well. Shh. Was that the door? It's him. Tonic water, please, and I'll blow usual. Thank you. Right, we are, George. Thank you. I think you'll find just about right. Thank you very much, George. Not many regulars in tonight? No. Perhaps there's a bug going round. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Just a minute. Are those Howard's socks? No, they're not. I'd know those socks anyway. Howard, are those your socks? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here you all are, then. Yes, here we all are. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you all doing round here? Well, a change is as good as a rest. That's what Robespierre said, Howard. <laughs> Don't mind. Come on, only shift up. <laughs> we won't stay long, honestly. You're all very quiet. Yes. No. What? Well, as a matter of fact, we were in the middle of a very interesting discussion. What about? What about? Uh, surgical instruments. Really? Yes. Go on, then. Uh, well, uh, as I was saying, Hilda, when I was looking in your ear the other day, it would have been very helpful if I'd had um, a surgical instrument to do it with. Very helpful indeed. Yes, one of those uh, things. <laughs> yes, that's them. With a light in it. That um, you look down ears with. Because it was a dull day. <laughs> There's something up here, isn't there? Well, what do you think's up then? You've heard about the presentation they made to me at work, or what I did in the park, and you're all too shy to ask me if you can have a look at it. Well. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> You're carrying it around with you. I just happened to left it in my pocket, love. So, there it is. Very nice, Marty. Very nice. <laughs> they had me up in the boardroom, you know. Sherry's and Lollabonks. Mr Purvis made a very nice speech. He said... You're not going to repeat the whole speech, are you? No. Just the bit that I shall carry with me for the rest of my life. Mr Purvis said, 
It's not often that we at Mole Valley Vow have the chance to point to a fellow employee and say, this man is not as other men. I agree. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. What are you doing that for? Well, I think we should talk about something else now. Well, let me finish, love. There are others who haven't heard this. Anyway, after Mr. Purvis's very moving speech, Mr. Beavis poked his head round the door. Do you know what he said to me? I'm going home now. Mr. Beavis said... We're going home as well. Good night. Mr. Mr. <laughs> well, what was that about? Don't you know? No, I don't. Unless you've upset them in some way or other. <laughs> <laughs> Find the different words they have for it, isn't it? Fate, kismet, destiny, call it what you will. It was that little girl's destiny to be near to death, and mine to be the strong hand that plucked her from those dark waters. <laughs> the effect we have on each other's lives in this life, eh? <laughs> I wonder if that little girl will tell her own children about me. It would be a form of immortality, wouldn't it? Yeah. Eternity isn't so difficult to understand when you really think about it. All I've popped out to do is get a paper, and oh, mother destiny! Oh, shut up! <laughs> I'm not a religious woman, Martin, but I've been praying all week that you would see it for yourself. See what? You've gone on and on and on about your bloody heroism. You've driven us all mad with it. We've had it up to here. It's coming out of our ears, but you wouldn't see. Not many regulars in the pub tonight, Anne. Of course not. They're all hiding in their houses behind locked doors. Why do you suppose Howard and Hilda and Paul walked away from you tonight? Whoa! Shut up! Even they had enough. <laughs> they hung on. My... God, how they hung on. Do you know there are casualties strewn in your wake? Do you know that? Do you mind if I say something? What? Uh, it's gone now. <laughs> We've had the same theory of swimming. We've had question time with you as Robin Day and the audience. We've had old man life, old mother destiny. We've even had Paul Newman being too old to play you in a film. Well, he is. He's 60. And I feel 180. <laughs> now, see here, Anne, I mean... I admit that I may have repeated myself once or twice. As you were entitled to at the beginning, yes. But after the million, millionth time of approaching the same subject from a different angle, Martin, you have become the definitive bore. <laughs> well, I do beg your pardon. The next time I walk past a field where a little child has been gored to death by a bull, I shall say, I'm very sorry, little boy or girl. I can't save you because it might bore my wife. <laughs> you clown. Right. You'll find me in the spare bedroom. I shan't be looking. <laughs> This is coming to bed with me. You'll probably bore that to death as well. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello, Martin. Uh, is Anne in? I know. She uh, went out quite early. Oh, fairly early. Oh, very early, really. Before I got up. Oh, I see. Well, thanks, Martin. Oh, well, can I help? Well, she said she had an essay she wanted me to read. You know where it is, do you? No, but uh, come in. Come in. All uh, open university stuff in the living room. Go through. Uh, would it be amongst that lot on the table? Well, let's have a look. Yep, here it is. Thanks. Uh, Anne and I uh, had a bit of a chat last night. Yes, I heard the scream. Oh, <coughs> I expect you're wondering what it was about. No, it's your business. Well, she said I'd become a bore because I kept on about saving that little girl's life. Do you think that's true? Absolutely true. <laughs> you did ask. Yeah. Would that be, um, would that be very boring? Very. On a, on a scale of one to ten, how boring do you think I've been? Eleven. <laughs> I don't have to take that from you. That's true. Tell her. All right, Anne's right, you're right, everybody's right. I didn't know. Yes, you did. All right, I did. Why is everything always so difficult for me? I've never been a hero before. I was sure it'd be more enjoyable. Oh, dear. I mean, I mean, take Bobby Charlton. Bobby Charlton? Yeah, that goal against Mexico in the 1966 World Cup. Oh, of course, you play rugby, don't you? I saw it, Martin. It was a great goal. Yeah, well, how many times has he been asked to talk us through that? There you are. You see, you said it yourself. Asked. It's up to the public. I don't suppose he goes home every night and says to his wife and friends, Hello, everybody. Did I tell you about that great goal I scored against Mexico? <laughs> how do you know? Oh, come on. Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, what, what, what are you supposed to do? I mean, what do other heroes do? I don't know. Just keep mum, I suppose. Oh, because you've, uh, you've never talked about your army career, have you? No, I suppose not. You've got a BC, haven't you? <laughs> Don't be dark. I bet you have. All right, then I have. The ironic thing is, I got it for saving a child from drowning. Really? Mm, in Burma it was. The river was a raging torrent. And the cliff I went in from must have been, all oh, two or three hundred feet high. Good Lord. Because the trouble was, I was already tired, you see, because I'd just overrun eight Japanese machine gun posts <laughs> and taken two hundred prisoners. My word. <laughs> I'm not a fool. <laughs> 
Perhaps you do a damn good impression of one sometimes. <laughs> All right, you haven't got a VC. What have you got? Nothing. The only heroic act I ever performed during my army career was to spend a weekend in Doncaster with a WAF drill sergeant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because Howard did national service. He never talks about it. Hilda was in the Rens. He never talks about it. I suggested that heroes might be quiet people. Not all quiet people are heroes. A quiet hero? Well, I've had my say. It's up to you, Martin. Oh, uh, 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 do me a favour, would you? What's that? Well, put the word round with the regulars that it's safe to go to the pub again. You big lug. Martin! Uh, I'm up here. I'm sorry I called you a clown. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry I went on. Where's your paperweight? In the cupboard under the stairs. We're a real hero, we keep it. You are a real hero. The fact that you've driven us all mad doesn't nullify what you did. Um, it was a spotlight, you see. For once in my life, I was right in it and everybody listened. Never really made a mark before. Not at school. Not in the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. Not even at work, if I'm honest. And as for bravery, well... The only other brave thing I ever did in my life was to propose to you. Well, that would stand some explaining. I didn't think you'd say yes. I don't think you should keep it in the cupboard under the stairs. That's the best place for it. As far as I'm concerned, the question of my... Heroism. ...is closed. Well, you're going to have to deal with this. It's a letter from the little girl's parents. No, they've said thank you. Burn it. You know, you're like a bubble in a spirit level. It's very hard to get you in the middle. <laughs> Oh, I say, that is nice. That's perfect, that is. Well, uh, uh, as you've opened it, I'll just... Oh, I say. Oh, I say, Anne. I am going to be immortal. Nice, that. A nice gesture. Yes, it's not bad, is it? Of course, I read all about him in the local paper. Did you? What a brave man, Mr. Martin Bryce. I wonder what he looks like. Well, uh, what would you say if I told you that uh, I am Martin Bryce? No. I could see how you'd want to be. <laughs> <laughs> 